Hello YouTube, this is Bowtie Media, and today I'm wearing a red bow tie to match my red burnt face as we've got a next installment of This Week in EDM for June 21st to June 27th of 2021. Lots of 20s there. Uh, the way this works, I'm going to talk about songs that I had listened to this week in EDM. There's 22 this week, which is actually a lower number than normal. Uh, and they're going to be split into four categories. Four categories. Uh, bad, meh, good, and standout songs. And my, uh, yeah. To kick us off, there are two bad tracks, so let's just get into it. We've got Follow Me, the Mashed and Kutcher remix by Shock One originally. Uh, this remix takes a substantially more minimalist, minimalistic and darker toned approach, but does so in a fairly repetitive manner. Uh, this whole track felt underwhelming and boring, and I felt like it lacked any real sustenance to it. And so I, it's right here in the, in the bad category. Up next, Buenos Aires, the Galantis and Bali Bandits remix, originally by Chami. Uh, I'm not really sure what this track was trying to do, or why this remix even exists. It's a remix, but sounds so similar to the original. It's like Galantis and Bali Bandits didn't even try to do anything different with it. They kept it Future House, which is not what either of them really do. They do either commercial or tropical, so I don't know why they didn't just do that. It's a really easy transition to make a different genre of house, so I, I don't know what they did there. Um, I feel like they're just... I, I feel like I've been trying to defend Galantis for a long time and be like, hey, they're actually really good. I, I like them quite a bit, but I, I... They're not giving me much to work with right now. So that was it for the uh, bad category. Up next, meh. Songs that I thought were kind of just okay. Uh, neutral songs that maybe you will enjoy based on your own musical preference. First up, we've got So What, the Artie remix, uh, originally by Luis the Child and Arizona. Uh, I really wasn't feeling this uh, Artie remix. Uh, I never really loved the original track, despite loving both Lewis the Child and Arizona. I sadly just didn't like it. The original felt dull, uh, and this remix really didn't help it either. Uh, I think having no strong feeling towards a song one way or another is sometimes worse than actually just hating it, and that's kind of how I feel about it. I don't really have any strong feelings one way or another about this track. So considering that this is the, what, third song we've talked about, uh, and I have no harsh feelings one way or another, it's a pretty solid week. There's a lot of good songs. Everything above it would be at least somewhat good, in my opinion. Up next, Love Me Better by Dylan Francis, Shift Key, and Mark E. Bassey. Uh, first of all, this album art is absolutely atrocious. The font, the color, the photo, it's, it has to be a meme. I just, uh, I don't understand. A graphic design is my passion. Uh, come on. Uh, actual song-wise, though, uh, it's a standard commercial Deep House track, and it's not all that bad. It's obviously going to be really short just because of the names on it, uh, which I don't like, and I think the vocals could have been a little bit stronger, but I mean, it wasn't awful. Up next, Don't Be Afraid by Diplo, Damien Lazarus, and Jungle. Uh, the track actually surprised me with how unique it was. It wasn't anything out of this world, but nowadays I've been conditioned to see a big name, or a couple of big names in this case, uh, and just assume it's going to be a boring, uninspired, really short track. Uh, but this really wasn't all that bad. I didn't think it was incredible, but at least it didn't suck. Uh, it's a more stripped back Deep House cut with vocals that sound a little bit like MGMT to me. And so I didn't think it was all that bad. Up next is The Sound by Habstract. Uh, I've been fairly neutral with Habstract tracks in the past, and I think this is just another one of those. Uh, for a song with a heavier tone, I didn't feel like it really went all that hard. I felt like it was holding back a little bit, or almost the entire runtime of the track. Uh, this may have been a mastering and mixing issue, but uh, to me, as long, if it feels like it's holding back, it feels like it's holding back the whole time. Up next, uh, some of you may hate me for this, uh, All To You by Crystal Skies and Fairlane featuring Micah Martin. Uh, I'm going to be disliked by a lot of people for saying this, but I felt like the song was really disappointing. Uh, for such a collaboration as Crystal Skies, Fairlane, and Micah Martin, uh, I expected a lot more creativity from Crystal Skies, a lot more emotion from Fairlane, and energy from Micah Martin, but I feel like we got a dumbed down version of all three of those. Uh, Hear me out a little bit. I, I don't hate the song. I just felt like there really could have been more energy, more oomph, some more creativity put into this track that I just think we didn't get. I think this could have been a real standout version of a song, but I just think it was just boring. If anything, the best was just the electric solos in the uh, just at the end of the drop sections, but wasn't a huge fan. Up next, Advertising by Pusher. 
Uh, this song comes in hard and stays hard the whole time. Uh, and you know what? That's kind of the beauty of this song because it's a take on uh, advertising and how in your face it can be. Uh, there are some brilliant lyrics throughout the track that speak to the power of advertising as well. And I think this is more of a concept song more than anything, something you wouldn't really list to, listen to more than once. And that's why it's kind of here in this meh category, because as a concept song, I think it's actually really cool and unique. But as a song song, I just wouldn't listen to it ever again. Up next, Escape by Ramesses B. Uh, this just is a classic liquid DNB Ramesses B track. Uh, it's nothing too crazy, but definitely solid. Uh, I liked the five plus minute runtime of the track, which enabled him to explore the space and atmosphere a lot more than I think he could have with like a three minute track. Uh, generally though, I felt like this was almost just another liquid DNB track. It wasn't too out of this world. Up next, uh, I believe Smile by No Taker. Uh, wow, I did not expect this track to start off the way that it did. The atmosphere of this track uh, is a little more uplifting than what I'm expecting or used to with No Taker, uh, which was a pleasant surprise. And uh, I've never really adored No Taker's tracks uh, one way or the other, but um, the community has a strong sentiment towards him and they really like him. And that's just not necessarily me. Uh, I like the sound design and style of the track, but yeah, the song's just not for me in the end. Up next, Code 1032 by Karma Fields, uh, the follow-up to, I guess, Code 1031 that came in a little bit earlier. And uh, based off the album art alone of this and It's Okay, this appears to be the second single of an upcoming project of sorts, an EP album, I'm not actually sure. Uh, but this definitely is an experimental Karma Fields track through and through, uh, but with a lot more Foley and random audio samples splittered throughout that I, I think we haven't really heard a ton from Karma Fields in the past. Uh, this really wasn't one of my favorite Karma Fields tracks, especially in recent days, and it felt a little too repetitive and without and lacking real purpose. Up next, Prego by Spag Hetty. Uh, Spag Hetty is here with a chaotic bass house track uh, that's full of energy and some cool sounds littered throughout. Uh, even though this track isn't really all that for me, which I've been saying a lot throughout here, uh, which is why everything's in the meh category, uh, but if you're a fan of just face melting bass house, uh, you will surely enjoy this track. Up next, Heard About Me by Dimitri Vegas and Like Mike, Felix Yang, Yang, and Ney. Uh, Production-wise, I thoroughly enjoyed this track, actually. Uh, it's another classic, short, popular one that's meant for commercial appeal, but I felt like this one had more inspiration and motivation for why it sounded the way it did. Uh, it's an interesting song with a storyline that wasn't just spewing nothingness, which I think a lot of these songs do, like a little bit of a relationship or something that had uh, at least somewhat of a cool story in it. Um, so yeah, that was, uh, that was it. That was also the first of the good category, which I forgot to mention off the top of that. But uh, yeah, so we're getting into stuff that is, I believe now, at least good. Up next is Help by Sullivan King featuring Rabbits. Uh, Sullivan King is out with a new album, Loud in all caps, and this is the final track from said album. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, it is here on This Week in EDM, but it's really not an EDM song. It's pretty much just alt rock. Uh, but besides that, it's a super enjoyable track and a nice change of pace from Sullivan King where he's not just absolutely screaming because I, I don't like that for the most part. I like when he actually just sings a little bit more. And I think having Grabbits on this track was a great thing as well. So I liked it. It was good. Up next, Journey to the Center of Myself by Elohim. Uh, indie slash experimental artist Elohim has just released her third EP, and this is the first track off of that EP. I've been a fan of Elohim since late 2016 and found her unique sound to be a real hit for me personally. Uh, but this track is a solid tone setter for the whole EP. Uh, Elohim's got her clean vocals backed up by an echoing chorus behind her uh, with a driving deep house beat that maintains the pacing of the track. Uh, if Elohim is an artist that you have not heard before, I would definitely check her out, check out this new EP. Uh, I liked it from the first listen I gave to the whole thing. Up next, uh, the seventh best song of the week, just so you know where we're going here. We've got uh, Never Be The One by Roman Silver featuring Larsa Petik. Lassa Petik? Uh, Roman Silver is here with a five track EP out on Bitbird, and this was just one of the three releases to come out with the actual project. Uh, so let's talk about this song, Never Be The One. 
Uh, this track has some fairly unique sound design, which is to be expected from Roman Silver. Uh, it's got that kind of classic feature bass and deep house mixture of sound, which has sort of become his signature sound, I believe. Uh, I did enjoy the track quite a bit, and I'm interested to hear what the rest of the EP will be like. I've only listened to uh, the first, I guess, two singles to be released, and then this third one, I haven't listened to the other two songs yet, but uh, I've been I've been pleased with everything I've heard so far. Up next is Sparrow by Lemaitre. Uh, Lemaitre's back with an, another absolutely funkadelic, heavy-hitting track. Uh, it's a signature kind of sound that I think they have uh, just in encapsulated over the years and stuff, yeah, things like Closer and I can't remember the name of the other song, but yeah, big fans of that. Uh, I've just fallen in love with them over the years and this song is really no ex exception. Uh, well, I don't think this is a, or the greatest Lemator track that they've ever created. Uh, it still has all the ingredients to be a long lasting tune uh, in their discography. Up next, uh, and we got five tracks left. We have the top five and uh, there's been no Monster Cat yet, so Monster Cat absolutely killed it this week. Uh, I don't do Silk on these, by the way, just because I don't want to talk about Silk twice a week every time. I just don't love it a ton, but Monster Cat really killed it. And we've got The Pit by Boss Fight. Uh, I did an initial reaction to this track thinking it was going, I wasn't going to enjoy it a whole ton, uh, but I was wrong. This is definitely my favorite boss fight track to date. His chaotic kind of screeching drops were uh, never my liking, uh, but that sound only encapsulated the back half of both drops, which I was happy about that it wasn't the entire runtime of the drops. Uh, and those first halves are actually fantastic. I love them. If it didn't have those kind of back end portions that I don't really love from boss fight, I think this would have been uh, maybe a, a top of the year for me. But um, yeah, it's a banger through and through, and uh, I really like this track. Up next, uh, Can't Sleep Alone by Smile, Ox, Sammy, and Nick Smith. Uh, this is a super funky track that I felt like uh, I should have enjoyed a little bit more. I think this had all the makings to be a 10 out of 10 song for me, but it just didn't feel like it fully connected with me in some way that I really can't comprehend or put into words. Uh, don't get me wrong, I, I really do love this track. This is, what, my fourth favorite track of the week. Uh, but I just felt like it could have used a little bit more variety in the core synth sounds used in the drop sections. Uh, and if it did have a little bit more, I, I don't know, something to it, uh, I think this could have been a Song of the Year contender as well. But, yeah. Up next, uh, All of This by Ioban, Ioban and Nuzb. I'm sure I butchered those. I'm going to say Ioban. Ioban and Nubs. Nuzbu. <laughs> this is my uh, actually favorite Ioban track to date. Uh, it falls into a worrying trend of the short house tracks on Monster Cat Instinct right now, uh, but I think uh, it makes up for any shortcomings with its energetic, fun drops. And uh, here is a crazy hot take. This is a better version of Cloud Nun and Direct's Margarita. I'm just going to leave that there. Number two, our runner-up song of the week for favorite song in This Week in EDM is Marinate by Memba featuring Titus. I have been loving the phase projects that Memba has been putting out right now, and this is the first of an upcoming phase three EP, and it is another fire track. Uh, this phase seems to have a more hip-hop centric approach to it, which I am all for. I've also been a fan of Titus's for more than a couple years now, and so I was stoked to see the two of them collaborate. Uh, I really disliked the short runtime on the track. Obviously, I've talked about this a lot, but I enjoyed all 136 seconds of the track as I did. And finally, our top track of the week is a standout, a standout song of the week. The only one is The Feeling by Crank Dad and Ace Aura. I also did a reaction to this track, and from what... Uh, yeah, from what you can tell from that video, I have just fallen in love with the song. I keep playing it. I didn't know how it was going to last for me, but I've really, really enjoyed it. I've been blasting it pretty much every day on my way to work all week. Uh, and this is one of the best sounding collaborations, I think, of two distinct styles that I have maybe heard in a very, very long time. Crank Dab brings his own sound, Ace Aura brings his own sound, and the two of them mesh together perfectly for this track. Uh, it feels like a mellow dub track without actually being what we would call melodic dubstep. I hope that makes sense. It's more or less a dubstep track with some banging melodies on it, but it's not like the classic really low and then high energy mellow dub sounds. It's it's it's, it's hard to explain. I, and I, I hope that makes a little bit of sense. But 
That was it for this week in EDM. Let me know what you guys think of these songs in the comment section below. If you would like to join me, Bowtie Gang, you can hit that join button next to subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, yeah, put some emojis that will be in the link below. And so you can talk about the songs in the same way that I am here with the bad, meh, good, and standout tracks. But I've been Bowtie Media, and I will see you guys in another video.